And you see, I didn't forget to hold my pinky finger up this time. That's when you really know you're on your P's and Q's, when you just automatically hold your pinky finger up high. But we got quite a bit of stuff to go over today, and it's a good day to go over it, you know? It's 355 here in northern New Jersey. It's about 62 degrees. Um, a little cloudy, you know what I mean? A little light rain, but we need the rain. What do they say? April showers bring May flowers. We are indeed in the middle of April, about smack dab in the middle of it. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm in a good mood. I got energy, but I'm also calm, you know what I'm saying? Because, well, that's just what it is today. So, as I'm sure everybody has seen, OJ Simpson passed. We got, I mean, I got, I got actually 30. I had 29 tabs pulled up. And <laughs> you said the big plastic cups. You mean these, these, these big ass plastic cups? We got to get rid of these shits. We got to go back to the big boy glass. Hey, you know what? You, you make a, you make a decent point right there. Because when, when you know, when you go back to the stoic days back in the 50s and shit in the 40s or, or whatever that may be, you know, like people used to drink out of glasses, you know, you would go to people's house and they would have their alcohol in the nice, fine, whatever you call those glasses, you know, back in the days of the true gentleman, now we just some bitch ass progressives drinking out of plastic cups and shit. But nah, we got to be better than that because plastic, well, you know, I'm just going off on a rant now. <laughs> Hey, real shit, though. The microplastics done fucked our brains up. They everywhere. They're in everything. They're now just a part of a part of the universe, I guess. But yeah, man. So, you know, I at first, like I said, at first I had 29 tabs pulled up. We got Sigourney, Teddy. What's going on? How's everybody doing today? Man, it's a it's a pretty decent Thursday. I got 30 tabs pulled up. So let's go ahead and just roll into it. Now, first, I'm a. Um, well, first, but before I pull up this video, because I haven't watched it yet, but again, all y'all have seen that OJ Simpson passed away, died from cancer today at 76 years old. Now, can y'all imagine, before we get into it, can you imagine the memes that would be online if this shit happened today? If this happened today, <laughs> one of the things on the other page, it was the juice is loose. Can you imagine how uh, crazy social media would go if all of this went down now? This is in 1994. I was two years old, or maybe I wasn't even two yet. I was because I was born January 31st, 1992. But imagine the memes. But I mean, there's a lot to take away from it. Like he he kind of was outside my generation. Again, I was born in 92. He was that man in the 80s or whatever, um, 70s, 80s. And he, you know, at, at one point he was like the athlete in america he was one of the people and um that really helped him get away with it you know he had the money to be able to afford some of the best defense attorneys on the planet and they put together a case and and, and they won what was amazing to me about oj uh is he ended up writing a book <laughs> like if i did it and then like in order for him to publish it, the family won some case to where they had to put if really small and just put in it just was like, I did it. And he like basically. He basically like confessed to exactly how it went down. It, it, it was crazy, but. um, Obvious miscarriage of justice. Uh, that that, you know, that he got away with it just in a sense of he, pretty much everybody figured that that he did it like. There, there's he doesn't really seem to have a, a large swath of people who think that he's actually innocent. Um, now, on the one hand, it's easy to say that he, you know, obviously he did escape justice. But on the other hand, I think that he lived a rather miserable life. Um, you know, his legacy and his name is forever in the mud and in the dirt. And. You know, I mean. That's. It, it, what a fall from grace, you know, to be to be where he was and how things could have turned out to what it, how things could have turned out to how they ended up going down, dying at 76 from cancer. And, you know, I mean, what type of quality people could someone like OJ ever really have in his life? People like him aren't really capable of 
forming or maintaining healthy relationships of any kind. So, you know, you got to think about that, plus the crumbling of his legacy, his name. And now anytime people think of him, it's just kind of like a tragic mistake. So while he may have escaped justice in the court system, uh, in, a, in a way, the universe still kind of got its revenge. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> right. Facts. Exactly. But yeah, that's why I said if this dude, if 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 this would have happened in modern day times, imagine the memes online. It would have been crazy. But yeah, it was just clear. And then again, the, the thing that really got it is like this dude wrote a book where he just like, why would you do this? Because he was he, he was explaining what happened. But anyway, let's see what's up with this clip. I haven't watched it. Since alert here, we have just learned that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His family putting out this statement just moments ago. On April 10th, our father, Arenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time... Of oh, yeah, that, yeah, my, my boy, that's, that's why the cover on the book is like that, because in order for him to put the book out, he had to put, like, if or whatever that word is, really super small. And But, yeah, I mean... He got away with it, but again, he could have died like he could have died like in a, a timeless legend. But honestly, people are gonna forget about him, and a lot of people in younger generations, like even in my generation, well, maybe not quite that, but there's definitely a ton of people who really don't even know who the hell he is because again, like his fall from grace is is legendary. He's just like an example of how money can buy you out. Of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. And that is from the Simpson family. Apparently, uh, had was battling cancer, Sandra. And um, as I think you had said that you'd seen him recently, and he had looked fa fairly frail in the last few months. Yeah, um, prostate cancer that he was not able to overcome, obviously. And I believe it was a TMZ camera that stopped him and asked if he would enter hospice care, mm -hmm. and to which he replied, no, he's 76 years old. He began to look very frail during his cancer battle. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, everything you just described about his uh, later part of his life um, overshadowed his early football success. I mean, this was O.J. Simpson, Buffalo Bills, 11 seasons in the NFL, um, but all that professional success obviously overshadowed by his trial and controversial acquittal. Uh, for the murders of his former wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman. I mean, we we all have our memories going back to those days. I know you have your... And too, like, oh, yeah, he definitely had to have had... I mean, research shows that basically if you made it to the NFL, then you probably have CT in some fashion. And I grew up with a lot of people, well, a variety of people at least, who ended up going to the NFL. And you you definitely see just different types of stuff that can end up happening. But he also just kind of seemed to be a... Uh, like a, a a bad case of narcissism, um, deep insecurity underneath it all that kind of just drove him to act out in, in anger and, and try to control things desperately. Um, but yeah, underneath it all, there was just this glaring insecurity um, th that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, we can picture the white Bronco and the police chase. And uh, why was that a time, 1995? Indeed. Dana? Yes, I was a waitress at the time when that jury decision came down. But also, I mean, to look back before all of that happened, you know, he had a pretty incredible football career. He won the Heisman Trophy in 1968. He was playing for the University of Southern California. He set numerous records there, as I'm sure the sports fans amongst us will be able to tell me. Um, he was inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1985. And then, you might not, I don't know if you, do you remember he was an actor? Yeah. Yes, and he- Donald James, thank you so much, my brother, for six months of membership. And thank you, everybody. We got Julio in the building. What's going on, my brother? But thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, and again, um, thank you so much, Donald, for the six months of membership. And thank you, everybody, for all your contributions and all the ways that you give them. As, as you've seen, we are definitely growing organically. And um, I'm really looking forward to just the continuance of the year, because as uh, the weeks pile on and uh, the weather gets warmer, the days get longer, um, 
you know, people are, are coming outside and doing things. And so I've been lining a variety of things up to where I can just really stay active in the city because y'all know I live up here next. Well, I live in Jersey, but, you know, right up here next to YC. But um, I'm definitely going to be very active this summer and it's going to go a long way. And by the way, next week, um, I'm going to start weekly it won't just be like one night a week programs but just weekly content that's focused on men's mental health how it works how to address it the stigma around it we're going to be bringing on like psychiatrists and different types of people to talk about things and providing a variety of resources um and i mean just because it's specifically fo- will be spe- primarily focused on men's mental health doesn't mean that women can't benefit from it as well because I mean, at the end of the day, men and women are these people. So thank you again for the six months of membership and thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you to everybody else. He was in, uh, what was that movie? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Naked Gun. That's the one I'm but remembering. But I knew no, yes. that was part of his very complicated um, career before all of this happened. Um, someone who knows a lot about that is Jim Gray, Dana. He is joining us now. Oh, uh, great. Jim, I know you've I mean, like from from any time that I've seen him, I, you know, again, it's like he got off, but eh, like he, he really paid for it with the rest of his life and his legacy and his name will never get over it and never get beyond it. But like, you know, he could have been he would have he, he would have been somebody who would have been in a ton of movies. He would have been the face on all. He could have had all the TV shows. This dude could have man. He could have done whatever he wanted gotten the news oj simpson dead at the age of 76 following his prostate cancer battle yeah it's a uh, kind of difficult to process this because uh such a such an amazing football career uh, broadcasting career and then overshadowed by the uh, conviction of civil uh, charges on the uh, uh, killing of uh, ron brown and nicole brown simpson uh, I'm sorry, Ron Goldman. Um, I knew O.J. quite well. Uh, When I worked at CBS, uh, O.J. worked at NBC, and they would send me to his games. um, And he would end up giving me uh, a ride home from the airport, a ride to the game. We got Queen Fritz in the building. What's going on? How you doing today on this? Well, now we almost to Thursday evening, but not quite. We still in Thursday afternoon. I'm I'm doing pretty well out here. And it's, it's a little rainy, but it's warm. It's nice. Uh, spent several meals together, and I never saw a guy who enjoyed his public persona more than O.J. Simpson. He would show up at a place and everybody would light up. Uh, then, of course, uh, he was acquitted on those charges but accused of murder, and uh, I didn't, uh, never spoke to him again uh, after that time. Oh, that- and again, see, and, and again, he got off, but it was like, uh, you know, and that's kind of how, like, he had to have dealt with people for the rest of his life, so, like, you know, consequences, you can't, you can't always evade consequences. And sometimes it may seem like you're evading them or someone is evading the consequences, but you know, you're probably going to pay for it in some form or fashion. And taking someone's life, it's, it's, if it's not in like some type of obvious self-defense, it's just, it's pretty egregious, especially how these two people's lives got taken. It was just, you know, jealousy and pettiness and and narcissistic rage and insecurity at the end of the day. And as he's describing, like, I mean, he was the man, you know? And so. Is that right? I did see him at a fight one night. Yeah, I did see him at a fight one night, but uh, uh, our paths did not cross. But uh, uh, a very disturbing, complicated life. Yeah. uh, O.J. Simpson had. Tell us about his early football talents. at the University of Southern California, indeed, uh, winning the Heisman, setting numerous records. He was a great football player, a great running back. He had the single season rushing record for a long, long time in the National Football League that was broken by Eric Dickerson uh, in 1984. Dickerson's record still stands to this day, 2105. But O.J. Uh, was the first running back in the National Football League to eclipse 2,000 yards in a single season. Uh, hasn't happened too much uh, in the. I, I hadn't. I never seen him on uh, on Cam and Mace's uh, show, but anytime I've seen him again, it's so clear. Like, oh, uh, he he had he that it he had it. 
in so many different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, if the glove does not fit, you must acquit. But um, but yeah, nah, man, he he got away with it, but mm, not really. The National Football League history, and he had that record. And he was a bigger than life figure uh, when he came to uh, the University of Southern California. Um, he kind of lit up. He kind of uh, lit up the playing field and he kind of took Hollywood by storm. He was one of those guys that uh, had this magnetism that attracted everybody to him and uh, had a big smile, had a, a tremendous career in um, commercials with Hertz, uh, amongst others, and uh, running through airports. And he was, he was an icon in football. And um, he went on to have a broadcasting career uh, with ABC and NBC, uh, appeared regularly uh, with Howard Cosell, and uh, he was a fixture. Oh yeah, there's definitely no comparison between <laughs> between Kissinger and Kissinger and OJ. Like that, that, that man Kissinger, his, his murders is just go beyond the point of personability. Like it ain't got nothing to do. It ain't it ain't nothing personal. It's just oh power. Henry Kissinger was just like oh. America is really powerful and I get to work for it. So let's just, you know, power, 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 power. And yeah, he, yeah, Henry Kissinger is a whole nother animal. Uh, he was a fixture uh, and had a spotlight uh, in America on television uh, because of what he had done on the football field and uh, was also in some movies. Yeah, um, and a lot of Hertz commercials I kind of remember as well. Uh, Jim, do you sort of remember going back to that moment in time when you learned that he was accused of these heinous murders? I mean, this was somebody you know, you knew, on the, on the football field. Um, and as you just described, this big personality who would stop the room when he walked in it uh, and light up the room. I mean, what do you remember going back to that moment in time when you learned he was accused of this? It was hard to believe because I had been in OJ's company hundreds of times and I'd never seen him have a bad public moment. Uh, he had signed every autograph. He smiled for everybody. He shook every hand. Um, he was available. He was accessible. Uh, he was seemingly very comfortable with his celebrity. I knew Nicole uh, had played softball uh, in their 4th of July softball games, uh, been over to his house uh, on, on a, numerous occasions. Uh, obviously had a double life. I did not know of any of the domestic abuse that had been going on. So I was shocked uh, when I heard this about. Well, yeah, I mean, well, well, well people who have, again, like, and, and I, I got, you know, I'm some, I got a part, I, I, I got personality disorder too. It's not narcissistic personality disorder, but regardless of so whatever you're going to see, like that type of stuff doesn't really come out unless you're like close to somebody. If you're not really close to people, then like, they, they're not going to really bring that out of you, whatever that may be, however it may be that you behave, whether it's whether it's, you know, outward behavior or like things that you kind of keep to yourself and it's more self-destructive in some type of way. Like, so, you know, it, it it's not surprising that other people don't see these things. Um, and it's again, it's not even always that somebody's putting on a show for everyone else. I mean, yeah, narcissists do that more just because they're more image driven. But even at that, like sometimes it's really not even that. It's just that they're not really close to anybody else. So like these these aspects of them aren't being drawn out. You know, it's not even always that people are like faking it or putting on a show for the public. Sometimes it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like you just don't know the motherfucker well enough, so you can't see it. And that can be all it is. All right, hold on. We got we got something else pulled up. Now we got I got it. I think three more for this. The five wildest OJ Simpson interviews after murder trial from hypothetical confession, right? The hypothetical confession that basically he made in the whole book. Oh, we got Aaron in the building. Oh, oh, I thought it was the other Aaron. Yes, Aaron Patton. But yeah, no, we, yeah, Aaron, we already, we was already, I already responded to that about, um, um, him, Henry Kissinger. Oh yeah, exactly, Aaron. Um, it's just you know, like it, it's just it's not the same type of relationship, and like they don't see, they don't really see you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so a lot of it can go under the radar. So let, let's see what's up with this. Um, which one is this? 
losing my mind at this clip of Ruby Wax talking about her O.J. Simpson interview. I did a piece to camera saying, I've been fixed up and uh, I don't know who my date is going to be. And we put him in the hallway and then I opened the door and it would be him. But when he was out there, all the trays were out there and he was looking for a knife to, to fool me when the door was open. But there was no knife, so he grabbed a banana. <laughs> and then OJ called me up on April Fool's Day in London. Oh said, God, that oh. aged horribly. That aged so bad. Whose idea was that? Oh God. Who, yo, if somebody did that in today, they would be canceled like a motherfucker. <laughs> Shit, that, that was a, oh, oh, that was a bad idea. I killed her and then went April Fools. <laughs> he said, I killed her April Fools. And, and again, to see, but see, that's what I'm saying. It's like he got off with it, but he got off. But the whole world was pretty much like, Man, this dude did it, man. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's a very small percentage of people who are who would really be like, I really genuinely think he got away with it. Like, you way too deep in the hotep sauce if you think that this motherfucker ain't do it. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, that was that was horrible. Whoever, whoever idea that was, was to to fool me when the door was open. But there was no knife, so he grabbed a banana. He was gonna use a knife, but there just wasn't a. He basically did, Donald, he wrote a whole, he wrote an entire book where he basically explained, hypothetically speaking, if I had done this, this is exactly how it would have gone down. And it's just like, bro, you just, it, it was like this weird way that of him like coping with the fact that he did it and everyone else knows that he did it. It was like, it, it was, it, it was weird. Oh God, who that was terrible. Whoever whoever's idea that was was terrible. And then he said, I did it. April Fools. Oh, oh. Okay, now we got what's this? We got um the Howard Stern show. This looks like this was from 1998. I would have been six years old when this came out. When was it? It was a it was a while ago. I remember Howard Stern got like a 500 million dollar radio deal that was a while ago people wasn't well, nobody getting deals like that um joe rogan shit it was, it was like 100 million dollars howard stern did 500 million dollars years before that i don't know but he definitely was kind of basically before my time i was too young by the time i got old enough to really listen to him i would but he's definitely a radio legend okay we got a gift. Seven minutes of OJ. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it, so let's do it right now. Something happened I don't know about today. No, we just want to ask a couple questions if we could. Yeah, so OJ gets nervous because he's a reporter. Yeah. What happened? Hands up. Did they find the real killer? New evidence. <laughs> New evidence? <laughs> That's impossible. I mean, ooh. <laughs> OJ, I just want to know, uh, do you think uh, people are treating you under... That's why I say it. Like, most, most of the people, and this could, you know, this could be a generalization, but, you know, the... the and and most of the people who are like OJ didn't do it, it's because they they too deep in the hotep sauce. I don't know if you know what that means, but basically they just you know they they black power in it a little too much. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's that's basically all it is because it's like you know those people who will defend you no matter what, like Diddy. These like those same type of people will also defend Diddy because you know you have to like they, they lost in the hotep sauce. Fairly? Oh, I don't know. I think I uh, I don't know. I don't worry about how I treat most of the people I socialize with are very kind and nice. I was on a six weeks vacation recently and everywhere my family and I went where people were terrific. So I don't worry about the rest of you. Don't sweat the stuff you can't do nothing about. <laughs> he was on a six week vacation. Yeah. He's a, every day's a vacation. <laughs> I've been on a six week vacation. Was he all out of breath? <laughs> Murder is hard work. <laughs> You know, that night I killed my wife, I was out of breath. Oh, oops. Oh. I took a six-week vacation, and people were very nice. Where was that vacation? On Jupiter? <laughs> <laughs> Where would you go if people would be nice? I went to Africa. <laughs> Don't sweat the small stuff. Small stuff, people think you're a murderer. Yo, Howard Stern basically, like, was one of the first streamers. I mean, 
right people who have had radio shows or TV shows. It's really the same thing. But he been he been doing this shit for a long time. He he kind of laid the foundation for this type of shit, really. In terms of just like kind of like that raw, authentic personality type of stuff, where you you know you didn't have to follow like all the guidelines and whatever. <laughs> Don't sweat this stuff. Don't sweat the stuff. He's a fizzer. Do you still get fan mail? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How's your investigation going? Uh, well, you know, we got information, but once again, we still we need help from LAPD. <laughs> you know, we need somebody from LAPD to help He's us. He's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. You know, Don't what the hell? I mean, how am I supposed to solve this crime without some help from the LAPD? <laughs> you know. Also, fortunately, I got some people who volunteered some time to go over stuff and well, check <laughs> into some information that come to us from time to time. But yeah, I want to meet the volunteers. <laughs> well, yeah, and- All right, what else we got? This is O.J. Simpson's temper flares during Denise Brown's interview. Oh, it's 11 minutes. So we're not going to watch all of this. Uh, definitely. Back now to our top story, O.J. Simpson, the phone call. He called in during a live live discussion on fox news channel this afternoon we were talking oh this uh i can't remember his name but he ended up being at fox and then he quit like he publicly quit because he was like yeah i can't really ride with this no more i can't remember his name he from mississippi though but yeah this is well i don't know what year this was see man that's how it goes man people grind for years you got to stay at it you got to you got to stick with it day in day out talking about lie detector tests and whether simpson himself once took a partial test and was failing With us, his late wife's sister, Denise Brown, and the polygrapher, whom attorneys in Simpson's trial alleged administered that test. I'm only calling for one reason, because you are a liar. Mr. Gibb will tell you. I've never met this man. If I met him, he's in a social environment, and you're telling America that he did some tests for me? No, I think... Let's settle it real easily, O.J. I just, I just heard you a second no, ago. No, wait, wait now. Say Mr. What Gelb is... met him. He said he never took a test. Mr. Simpson. And plus, Mr. Gelb will tell you there is no way on earth that a person in the middle of a lie detector test that somebody can tell if they're filling it. Why would you call in yourself to say this? He, 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 seemed, he never seemed to do himself any favors to make himself look like he was innocent. Like, why, why, are, you calling, why are you calling in to say this? Are not filling a lot. Mr. Simpson, down. what if he's hooked up? It's impossible to do that. Mr. Ask Simpson, Mr. Gelb, the pertinent question. I, Stop giving bogus information. Mr. Gelb, ask him, has he ever met me? Mr. Simpson, here's the problem. Mr. Gelb says he has an attorney client privilege relationship. Ask Mr. With Gelb, you. I'm saying this. And as well, that's result, a dangerous. Have we ever met? That's, he says that he can't answer that question because Why? he has an attorney-client privilege relationship with you. Would you release okay, him from well, that attorney-client privilege? Okay, well, I'm just saying that you privilege? guys talking about Mr. Gelb was in some room with me and said that he can't answer it, to my knowledge. Well, you that's know, shocking. Mr. He Gelb wasn't? may have been in a social environment. Let's I don't recall it. ever meeting him outside of a yeah, social environment. Yeah, 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 good point. So, so to what my you're knowledge, saying, exactly, he was, this is definitely it. He, he, I'm sure he, he was advised to not do things like this, but this is kind of like, oh, oh, why, why are you doing this? In Europe, Mr. Uh, Mr. At the Simpson, time, the week of uh, Nicole's death. So I don't know what you, you're giving. Well, I appreciate you calling. Him. I've heard you twice, sir, say to your audience that OJ testified that he was with Mr. Gelb somewhere. To my knowledge, I've never met Mr. Gelb, and I know I've never said I was with him. Mr. My knowledge, I've never met. Well, <laughs> lawyer talk. To go up anyway. Well, at least there's that. Plus, Mr. Gelb. I, I don't believe we met before. Confirm to you. That is impossible for somebody. Oh, yeah, no, nah, yeah. His fall from grace was something else. And again, like he, in a lot of ways, he was before my time. But it's still, oh, yeah, if I play this, TikTok don't be letting you listen to nothing for real. Guess what my- or like, they'll let you see it, but then it won't play. Let's see if it's- Your listeners would not be. See that that's what it does. It don't they don't let you watch it because they'd be like, oh, you have to put TikTok on whatever device you're on. But I'm not doing that. At least not today. Well, what is this? Oh, this is an hour and thirty something. Oh, it's so much content out here. Said, I, oh, this is one of the good guys. And you were together from then on? Well, yeah, well, that, I had to take her, before we went to the party, I had to explain to her that I was married. <laughs> and who was uh, getting married, I was hosting their wedding. Oh, yeah, I think in this interview, she was basically um, asking him questions about his book. And he was like, no, hypothetically speaking now, and, and then he was like, 
detailing it like crazy. It, it was, oh, God. But, yeah, no, this is obviously we're not going to watch this whole thing because this is just too long. It's almost two hours. And at my house, and the cold was crying. And then it got to the point I said, well, it can't be that. It had to have been a chilling experience for her to be sitting in front of him listening to, like, oh, God, this man did it. Sad, right? And she said that Marcus was not my friend. If I'm going to commit suicide, I am obviously point with the pictures and stuff. The yeah, y'all can check that out at some point. I'm sure. I mean, we all we all gonna be checking stuff like this out for for quite some time. We got Brewski in the building. It's been a while. How you doing? Yes, exact exactly, Brutus. Because because the stuff that he would do is just like, huh, like. But I guess it was just really on his conscience, at least to the point where it was like, I mean, how could you have done something like that and gotten away with it? And you had to have dealt with it and coped with it somehow. You feel me? Like, again, like I said, someone like OJ, especially after that, man, there's no way he had real quality people in his life who really wanted to be close to him. No way. And again, someone like that, if he, if he went that far, then. You know, I would assume being being close to him is difficult regardless. But, um, but yeah, absolute miscarriage of justice. But eh, he he kind of paid for it because he died a very miserable man. Oh, yeah. But like I said, if this happened, if this happened today, there would be the memes online would be something else. The juice is loose meme. Right, we about ready to move on. We don't need to to watch this. I mean, read all of this. Oh, they got detailed. This is on uh, Los Angeles Times. They got it detailed, laid out on how the chase went down. And that's probably about it. We don't really need to. Well, maybe one, maybe one more short, short clip because this one's only two and a half minutes. So let's see what they're saying here, and then we'll move on. Simpson's family says he died yesterday, succumbing to his battle with cancer, surrounded by his children and grandchildren. It was revealed in February that Simpson was battling prostate cancer, but he refuted rumors at the time that he was in hospice care. ABC News Rena Roy. Okay, they said that in the last video. All right, well. Yeah, that that and that's the thing. That's why I say like that. Well, that kind of sums it up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that is now the legacy of um, O.J. Simpson. And it could have been so different. You know, like if he were to have died now from cancer, it could have been such that the whole world would have been mourning. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Right. Like I, I was tripping and then I remembered who the fuck I was mid gulp had to do it correctly but yeah um uh a, a, a tragic life definitely now oh we got so much stuff pulled up megan kelly saying there's no doubt trump will lose the hush money case i mean look I, whatever all of these cases if they go through trial he gonna lose them that's why he keep on trying to appeal everything so that he can you know, hopefully, well, for him, hopefully win, um, win before he actually has to go to trial, because it don't matter which one of these ones it is, he's going to lose all of them, because he's guilty, and not only is he guilty, he kind of asks, he begs everyone to please, please, please find me guilty. Let me switch gears, I want to talk about the hush money case, look, yeah, I've said many times, I think that the Manhattan DA shouldn't have filed this case. I think it's a misdemeanor souped up to look like a felony. I think it too long, took too long to bring the case. I think the DA Bragg brought it after, you know, getting slammed for not filing the criminal fraud charges against Trump. And I think, by the way, that no matter what the outcome, it's going to help Trump politically. But with all that said, at the least on the misdemeanor of filing the false record, meaning pretending that the payments to Stormy Daniels were legal expenses. It sure seems like they have a pretty strong technical legal case against him, no? The statute of limitations is expired on the misdemeanor. But, so but that's no. a legal issue that's already been, you know, he, he can argue that, you can't argue that in front of the jury. 
But the, Dan, the only reason, as you know, that he was allowed to revive a dead misdemeanor, dead because of the statute of limitations, by saying it was a misdemeanor to cover up an underlying felony, which was this election money um, campaign donation that he was trying to cover up. That's the only thing that reinvigorated this dead charge. And that's a BS charge, too. It's all tied together. So I don't think there's any legal merit to any piece of this, not one piece. But you're talking about why the case shouldn't have been brought. Right. I mean, you're saying that as a result, this case, case that's honestly, who gives a fuck? <laughs> who cares? It, it, it doesn't matter. OK. Oh, we got Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, yeah. We're going to move on to Marjorie Taylor Greene before we move on to other stuff. I think I got some about Sean Hannity. He was basically like, Democrats, please reverse. Please reverse what the Arizona Supreme Court did, because, I mean, it's just not good for Republicans. It's not good for Trump either. Um uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. First, let's check this out. They make fun of me, Marjorie Taylor Greene gripes while defending Eclipse beliefs. I mean, look, listen, listen, y'all. If you're going to be a public figure, you it, it's always so funny to like when people like Marjorie Taylor Greene say stuff like this or even like like when people like Lizzo say stuff like, oh, people are so mean to me online. And it's just like, hey, shut up. You could just not look at it. You you could do that. First, you just got to accept that people are going to say stuff like they will. I, I, I'm, I'm a much, much lower level of fame than Lizzo or Marjorie Taylor Greene. And people from all over the world say all types of stuff about me online. And for the I don't look at any of it because I'm too busy. Like, you know, you don't like, who cares? But especially if you're a public servant, then you, you get into a whole nother level of you just got to have thicker skin than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, who get, so what? No, they make fun of me. They make fun of me. Uh, oh, well, get, get another job. Like, you know what I mean? And if it's really that big of a deal, then just don't look at the shit. It doesn't matter. But let's see what she had to say. Uh, so for all of these people that mock me and they most recently mocked my faith and it, made it, exactly uh, uh, twin dragon. And that's the other thing that, that that makes it a quadruple shut the fuck up to Lizzo, because it's like, you know, you, you, you whine and can, even though you're a multi, you're, you're very successful, you're a multimillion, you're a multimillionaire, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's more than plenty of men out here that like some big girls, big girls of all shapes and sizes. I mean, look, Women know. Look, look, at the end of the day, women know that that uh, there's a man out there for them. You know, men can say men, men talk a whole lot of shit publicly. Oh, she's too fat. She's too this. She's a whore. She's on OnlyFans. But behind closed doors, those those are the exact women that they can't keep their hands off of and can't stop chasing and, and what have you. So all that being said, not only is Lizzo a millionaire, not only can she basically live whatever type of life she wants. But you also, you, you, you know, you're you're calling other people overweight and you're like making them shove bananas up, up other women inside other women and stuff. So, you know, it's just what it is. Made fun of me saying that God is sending us a sign to repent. Um, and when I posted that on my social media, I really don't care what they make fun of me and mock me about. The American people are not stupid and they see through all of their lies and they do not believe any of this garbage. And this is why MSNBC is losing their ratings. This is why nobody cares about Ron Flipikowski and everyone knows he's not a Republican. He's a radical Democrat. Um, and this is why, you know, people are sick and tired of the media, frankly, and they I'm I like barely listened to a word she said. She's almost done, though. They turned it off. And this is why they watch shows like War Room and many other shit in many other shows that actually talk about the issues that people care about. So we're winning this. We are winning the information war, Steve, because we're, <laughs> we're winning the information war. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. OK, now let's get to Sean Hannity. Let's see what he has to say about this. Let's see what he has to say about Arizona and the Supreme Court move. Oh. Hannity demands Arizona repeal abortion ban. Get rid of it, he says. Let's see what's up. And the people on the left are so desperate, attacking Trump 
Now for an Arizona Supreme Court ruling that upholds what is a Civil War era law banning abortion. This will be fixed in the next week or two. Let not your heart be troubled. I can, I can pretty much assure that that will happen. Trump opposes the law and this ruling, or you can believe- Yeah, I get that she's human pleasure policy, but sometimes we just gotta, you know, yeah, it, you know, sometimes you just gotta toughen up a little bit. Leave Joe's make pretend Donald Trump that doesn't exist. And you know what? Arizona's governor is a Democrat. At least in my opinion. State's attorney general is a Democrat. Because you don't hear me boohooing about the shit motherfuckers say about me. It's just not that big of a deal. Democrat. The state legislature is almost evenly divided. If Democrats, you want to get rid of the law, well, you have a chance right now to get rid of it. And I would advise you, get rid of it. <laughs> he begging her. He beg he doing he doing the best he can. Please, please get rid of it. Trump that doesn't exist. And you know what? Arizona's governor is a Democrat. The state's attorney general is a Democrat. The state legislature is almost evenly divided. If Democrats, you want to get rid of the law, well, you have a chance right now to get rid of it. And I would advise you, get rid of it. They would rather use it as a political tool ahead of November. Most politicians on the left do not actually care about making your life better. He's like, he, he's kind of like freaking out. Like he seems to be freaking out. Like. I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, they they have good reason to be, but the the move. Oh no, we're not gonna do this. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do this. There, there's some article pulled up. There's some article pulled up about Ron uh, DeSantis saying that he's well, of course, he's gonna help Trump. Uh, Trump get money. He's gonna help raise money for Trump. Of course, but that's on a, a site that we have to pay for, so we're not gonna do that. Oh, we got some economic updates. We got more on the abortion stuff. I don't know where are we at. What is this? Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and just keep on going down this rabbit hole because we got several articles pulled up about this. We got several of them pulled up. Voters will remember. Arizona GOP thwarts efforts to repeal 1864 ban. This is who Arizona state Republicans are. They are so pro-life, they will let women die to appeal their radical base. To appeal to their radical base, said Democratic lawmakers. Republican lawmakers, and this is by, this article is by Julia Connell. Republican lawmakers at the federal, hold on, one sec. Um... Republican lawmakers at the federal and state level have displayed considerable hand-wringing this week over the Arizona Supreme Court's reinstatement of a 160-year-old abortion ban. With presumptive GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump saying the court had gone too far. Now, you even had Carrie Lake saying, um, you even had Carrie Lake saying that uh, they went too far. Because again, it just not i mean not only is it absolutely crazy and egregious it looks crazy and egregious it's like y'all had to go back 160 years just just to get your way just to get some minority way like come on um but when given the opportunity to repeal the law that one state representative said quote cannot stand on wednesday the party backpedaled in the state senate republicans removed from wednesday's agenda a bill to repeal the ban and gaveled down state senator uh, anna hernandez as she tried to introduce a motion before the gop members walked out of the chamber so i guess that means that they tried to introduce a measure to counter this and republican lawmakers are like nope we're not even gonna talk about this but let's keep reading quote this is who Ari uh this is who the arizona state senate republicans are they're so pro-life that they will let women die to appeal their radical base said the state Senate Democrats, quote, they broke their own rules and ignored Democratic members who attempted to introduce a measure to repeal the territorial ban on abortion. They walked out on Arizona and turned their back on doing the right thing. I hear you. I hear you. I Looks like that's them back there walking out. Yo, that's crazy. And again, it's like, 
other than just the simple the simple push to control people. I mean, that's it. It's it, it just to you know specifically you know women, but also just kind of controlling the non rich masses as much as humanly possible, especially in a culturally structural way. Um, you know, these abortion bans are so unpopular. So it's like, what else could it possibly be? It can't be because you think it's going to help you win elections. Because I don't care what you believe. I don't care how pro life you are. There's no way, especially if you are a member of government in any capacity. There's no way that you're unaware that people don't want this shit. Even Republicans don't want this, right? So it's just ideological. That's all it is, man. These people are crazy. These people are crazy. Crazy and evil. Is that what we're saying here? So the message to Arizona is that we are so pro-life in this chamber that we're going to kill you. That's the message. We're going to cite a speech today on the floor. They speech. didn't even let her. Damn. I mean, well, what else is there really to say then? They standing on it. They like, nah, the Supreme Court did this and we ain't even going to let y'all attempt to do nothing about it now. I'm sure that there's going to be more, you know, more attempts to, to reverse this because, again, this is, this is nuts. This is crazy. And two, uh, Arizona is uh, it, it's it's purple now. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's a, it, it's it's a, it's even more up for grabs now than it was before. So this is just. But again, they don't care about that shit, man. And that's why they've been, you know, the the, the battle to, you, you know, get people on the federal uh, federal judges and the federal benches that you know that's been going on for quite some time uh, but they've been well aware that people are the majority doesn't want their policies like this shit is crazy these these people are crazy like there's nothing else there's nothing else to say you can't work with this you just have to defeat it that's it you just have to defeat it you can't give these people a chance you you they, they because they don't care about any of that shit. They just want their way. So when you're dealing with somebody who only wants their way, you got to get your way. You know what I'm saying? That's just what we got to do. I won't listen to you. Okay, well then fuck you then. And the state house state rep, Matt Gress, who said Tuesday that he rejected, quote, rolling back the clock to a time when slavery was still legal made a motion to vote on a Democratic bill to repeal the ban. But as Mary Jo Pitzel of the Arizona Republic reported, Gress then joined his party in coming for a recess and adjourning until next week, bringing the action to a halt. Democrats chanted shame at the Republicans as they filed out of the chamber. Oh, they, pulled, they pulled a Game of Thrones on, on their ass. I mean, they don't even want to talk. They don't even want to talk about it. They not even to be. And, and you know why they don't want to talk about it? One, one, because obviously they they don't care. You know, that they, they don't give a fuck. So they're like, I don't want to talk about it. Fuck what y'all want. So that first and foremost, that that's the number one reason they don't care. So why talk about it? Because they're authoritarian. But the other reason they don't want to talk about it is because they don't have an argument. They can't win the argument. They can't win the argument. You know, they don't even want to talk about it because how can you? Oh, we got Mara. I hope you're feeling well, uh, Mara. I hope you're doing better. I hope that everything is coming along decently. I hope you're getting your rest. And I hope that you have your head, your head held high or high enough. You know what I'm saying? One day at a time. Let's do it. Right, exactly. We in 1600. And that's the other thing. Like, again, when, when like conservatives, when they... Oh, the, the, this mythical rosy past that really never actually existed. But then there's a lot of elements that they want to come back. But, you know, sometimes you got to think, do a lot of Republican voters like, is it, it the, the, the rhetoric and the, and the verbiage sounds great, but do they really want these things? I, I mean, I guess a lot of them do. But here we go. Um, immediately brought into press. Okay, let's see. Democratic members interrupted Gress's press conference 
reminding the media that the Republican sponsored bills to enshrine fetal personhood into law. He's lying, said state rep Annalise Ortiz. Do not fall for it. Do not fall for it. Matt Grass is a liar. He does not care about the women who will die because of this horrific ban. I absolutely. Absolutely. Do not listen to Matt Grass. That is a lie. Matt Grass is absolutely an untruthful. This is not true. Not true. Yeah, I did see that, Donald. I did see uh, them in the chambers. They were, you know, speaking in tongues. Oh, God, please come down into this chamber so that we can force these bitches back into the kitchen. Please, God, come and see that. I mean, that, that's basically what they was what they was doing. They was on the phone like, not saying a goddamn thing, not saying anything whatsoever, you know. Uh, yeah, that, that ridiculous nonsense, unfortunately. Yes, we did. Uh, actually, I was on. Um, I was on with uh, Dr. Richie yesterday, and, and that's one of, the, yeah, that's one of the stories that we covered. Oh no! But the greatest story that we covered yesterday with Dr. Richie was the dude who, um, who he faked his death through this like crazy elaborate ass scheme so that he because he owed like a hundred thousand dollars in child support, and he he faked his death and almost got away with it, you know. It was like, damn, this this man is determined. And you kind of got to commend his determination. He got caught in the end, you know, so he could have put those, he could have put that energy and those skills to a more positive use than just avoiding paying for your child. But, you know, I guess we all make mistakes, but that seems like a pretty deliberate mistake. All right, hold on. I think we got some more stuff pulled up about this quite a bit, actually. Um... I don't know about quite a bit, but at least a couple more articles just in, in terms of campaign. So we got Aaron in the building. What's going on? How you doing today? How are you today? Yes, we got both Aaron's in the building or at least one of them now. But there was another Aaron in before. I don't know if you're both here anymore, but regardless, it is an Aaron Thursday. Biden campaign and DNC hammer Trump in Arizona over abortion. President Joe Biden's campaign kept Focus on the brewing battle over abortion in Arizona with the launch of a new ad Thursday, which is today attacking attacking former President Donald Trump. The 30 second power back ad is part of a seven figure ad buy in Arizona, a top battleground state in the 2024 race where Democrats are hoping to win the state and open Senate open the to win the state and the open Senate seat again. Biden speaks directly to Arizona voters in the ad, once again, blaming Trump for the dilemma women face over access to abortion. And two, I don't know if it's in this ad, but also as well, I mean, Trump is uh, publicly taking credit for for the Supreme Court and what it did. He, before it happened, he took credit for what it will do. And then after they did what they did, reversing Roe v. Wade, there's like footage of him saying like, oh, this, you know, this is because of me. Like, so... Well, let's see the ad. Because of Donald Trump, millions of women lost the fundamental freedom to control their own bodies. And now, women's lives are in danger because of that. The question is, if Donald Trump gets back in power, what freedom will you lose next? Your body and your decisions belong to you, not the government, not Donald Trump. I will fight like hell to get your freedom back. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. No, I, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with that ad at all. I think that was a pretty, in, in terms of just like, um, for an ad for like a campaign ad ad buy. That that's a fine ad. That's definitely a good ad. It it, it gets to a real issue. It's yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, more of this. Definitely, the Democrats. Uh, and not only not only do Democrats need to be aggressive on this, but they 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 will be aggressive on it. So. This is definitely something that I think we can we can sleep soundly at night, not having to worry about if Democrats are going to push on this because they they will. I mean, there's plenty of blame to go around for X, Y and Z, but good ad. That's definitely a good ad. Um, and yeah, and, and too, especially important, because right here it says, you know, Biden won Arizona in 2020 by fewer than 11000 votes. So you know, on a grand scale, that ain't nothing. Um, um, so. Yeah. More of that. 
Um, is there anything? Let, let me see. I still got quite a bit pulled up. Uh, we got we got Jessica Tarla Tarlov. We got Trump. Oh, we got apparently Trump was ranting and, and, and going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Um, I'm trying to see if uh if I have anything else pulled up about this. I got a, I, I got a bunch of other stuff pulled up that we're gonna get into. Um, nah, it looks like pretty much now we gonna okay. Now the next thing we gonna get into Trump flipping out. <laughs> All right, what's the first one? Okay, here we go. Here we go, y'all. Trump drops new video rants claiming victory on abortion amid blockbuster Arizona ruling. Claims Democrats are reeling. All right. I don't know how many of these he did. Apparently, he did a bunch. But let's see what's up. Yes, yeah, show me the sauce. Exactly, Fritz. Show, yo, that that was because I think it had been, it had been a it had, there have been several times I was on Indisputable um when uh Dr. Richie was out doing whatever. Um but it's always good to be on with him. But yeah, no, yesterday's was funny. And, and then, yeah, and then that was the uh, the Karen one, the show me the sauce. She ate half the pizza and was like, you know what? I, I, there's no sauce on this pizza. I ate half of it and just realized it. All right, so let's see what's up with this. I think we have quite a variety of stuff to go over. You know the Democrats are reeling when they have no response to my recent statement on abortion other than, oh, he's only kidding. Okay. This <laughs> We only listen there. There is only we only heard five seconds of this, and I can already tell where it seems like he's not reading a script. So let's get back into it. Oh, and this is the perfect look too for him to start off with. I, let's go. You know the Democrats are reeling when they have no response to my recent statement on abortion, other than oh he's only kidding or he will change it or he's not going to do that. He'll do something else. Because he knows and they know that when they say that, uh, they're in trouble. I guess this means that we will win the election because they're so bad on every other issue. They are so bad on the border, on the economy, on energy. energy. He's not reading. He's just talking. Every single, we were energy independent just four years ago. And now look what happened and look what happened to our country. Millions four years ago, the country was shut down. Millions <laughs> of people flowing in from prisons, from jails. It's really a terrible thing. So the only issue they have, the only issue they think they have is on abortion. And now all I say is the states are handling it and it's totally killed that issue. We'll take care of everything. We're going to make our country great again. Everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> what? That... That okay, there's more. Apparently, there's more. He just turned the he just he did they, they just turned the camera on and just made 30 second or, or 60 second clips of him right in his mouth. I whatever the hell that was that he just said. Okay, people forget fighting Roe v. Wade was right from the beginning all about bringing the issue back to the states pursuant to the 10th Amendment and states' rights. It wasn't about anything else. That's what it was. We brought it back to the States, and now lots of things are happening, and lots of good things are happening. Oh. Ooh, you better, you better shut up with this shit. Who, I mean, you know, we know Trump doesn't listen to people, but uh, you, you probably shouldn't put a whole lot more videos out like this. But he will because he's Donald Trump. But, uh, yeah, this, this is not going to help you, bruh. People forget fighting Roe v. Wade was right from the beginning all about bringing the issue back to the states pursuant to the 10th Amendment and states' rights. It wasn't about anything else. That's what it was. We brought it back to the states, and now lots of things are happening, and lots of good things are happening. What does that even mean? Not now lots of things are happening, and lots of good things are happening, but let's continue. Every legal scholar, everybody from both sides said, you have to get it out of the federal government. You have to bring it back to the state. 
Every everybody said this. <laughs> it wasn't about anything else. After he's he, he's he's all he's doing right now is trying to divert the blame to everyone else, but it's he can't. He's, it's everyone else's fault. I I had no choice. We won Marjorie Dannenfelser of the SBA and Lindsey Graham, Senator, started saying, no, let's go back to the federal government with zero weeks. And when they got nowhere, they upped it to six weeks and they got nowhere again. And they recently upped it to 15. Bro, what, why, what is, what do you think this video, these videos are doing for you? I mean, it's, it's Donald Trump we're talking about, but it's like, this is pretty bad, but. weeks. And we're obviously willing to take the number upward, 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 because they were getting absolutely nowhere with the Democrats, and they never would because the Democrats will never give up on this issue, no matter how many Republicans want and ask and are willing to give everything. You could give unlimited abortion. What is he talking about? And, and they recently upped it to 15 weeks. And we're obviously willing to take the number upward, 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 because they were getting absolutely nowhere with the Democrats, and they never would, because the Democrats will never give up on this issue, no matter how many Republicans want and ask and are willing to give everything. You could give unlimited abortion. Donald, who is this going to be effective with outside of his stupid ass base? And the Democrats would find a reason not to do it because they don't love our country. They don't want to solve a very difficult problem. But we did. It's called states' rights, and the states are working feverishly to get it all resolved. I mean, this isn't particularly going to hurt him. I'm not. It won't hurt him, but I don't think this will help. I mean, it, 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 it's it's fucking Donald Trump. I mean, what the hell has really made it that big of a deal? This hurts him, but. Yeah, I you know now I'm thinking too. It's just like it's just kind of like a it's just kind of neutral. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just kind of neutral. It's just you know it's just not going to do much. It would be better for him not to say anything. But you know at this point it's kind of like I mean why why even bring that up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is fucking Donald Trump we're talking about here. Fifty three years it went, and we did something that nobody thought. We brought it back to the states where it belongs, and where everyone wanted it. The states will be making the decision. Republicans are now free to run for office. Based <laughs> okay. All right, hold up. I think it's... Well, hold on, what, what is this? Did he do more? Hold up. Let's, let's see what he's talking about here. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> oh, he, oh, my God. Yeah, it, it's, it's just... It, it's just... Oh, my God. What? Oh, what is happening? God, I don't. I mean, like, I I don't even know what to think, man. <laughs> All right, let's see what this is. Trump repeats himself a whopping twenty-one times in two minute ranting. Two minutes ranting about presidential immunity, Supreme Court case. Okay, what what is? Okay, so this is different. Now he's talk now he's back talking about himself. So let's see what he has to say. Supreme Court will address the historic question of presidential immunity. Without presidential immunity, the president cannot function as his political opponents will blackmail and extort him with the threat of wrongful persecution. Even though this has never been a problem until I was in office, it, it's going to be a problem forevermore moving forward. <laughs> he he talking like we're at the founding of the country or something. Like this is a like this is a hypothetical concern that we may have to deal with at some point. Like he's so dumb, but millions and millions of people want him back in office. So you know, I guess he he, he got something figured out. Execution at every turn, including when he leaves office, they're going to say, "You don't give us this, whether it's for taxes or military or anything. We're going to go get you because we're allowed to now because you wouldn't have immunity." We're going to get you after you leave office. It literally would be blackmail. We look forward to. And again, would be. It would be like, bro, the country is 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 old enough to where you don't that the words you're using don't make sense. But this is Trump we're talking about. He's ah, he's so he is so stupid. Republicans love stupid man. Love him some Donald Trump. Love him some George W. Bush. 
They love Ronald Reagan, but like each one of those just got, got like progressively dumber. <laughs> Presenting our case in the Supreme Court, it's going to be one of the most important cases because without presidential immunity, you have nothing. You don't have a president. You have. And again, it's like exactly, Donald, just complete authoritarianism because even, you know, underneath the argument, we're talking about one person at the end of the day. We're talking about one person who is put in a position that they have serious power. I mean, like serious power. You know, if no one else should be held accountable for stuff like this, it's that person who's in that seat. And he's and we're supposed to have all this concern about this one guy. But they do, man. They love him. Have just a ceremonial position. And we can't have that. A president has to be strong, has to be powerful, has to make good decisions. But if you don't have presidential immunity, if you don't have a a strong form he's really he's not saying anything new he he's he's he, this is the same shit he's always said but you know i guess it's fun to listen to it again <laughs> he was in the other clip talking about what, what what was he even saying i don't even know what the hell he was talking about neither did he he said it's always ev ev no he was like everybody said that, that i have to put these justices in there because we got to give it back to the states because you know Everyone was talking about this. Oh, this is just bad. It's bad news, man. This is bad news. We got to keep the fight alive for sure because these motherfuckers is crazy. Look at this. Look at him. Look, look at this guy, man. Of immunity. You're not going to have anything. You're not going to have a president that can function. It's not going to work. It would never work. Everybody. It would never work, even though it has for hundreds of years assumes that a president has immunity a president has to have immunity or he cannot or she cannot function if a president doesn't have immunity he or she will be nothing more than a ceremonial president rarely he made another clip to say the same exact thing he's saying the same shit he said in the last clip having the courage <laughs> to do what has to be done for our country and to make our country great again this is not what the founders had in mind at all. This is not what they wanted to think about. This is not where they wanted us to be. The founders wanted the president to have immunity so the president can feel free to make decisions. Hopefully, they'll be great decisions. But whether they are or not, a president of the United States has to have immunity. Thank you. <laughs> The Supreme Court. This dude said whether or not whether or not he makes good or bad decisions, it doesn't matter. He just has to have immunity regardless. You just just let him. Oh my God. Oh. See and and again, see this is why next week we're gonna start the show about men's mental health and not just the weekly show. Lots of content about it spread throughout, and we're gonna get more and more into the other nerd shit because it's like you look at this stuff and it's just like. Oh, oh, it's just like, what is going on? Oh, we got Vincent in the building. What's going on? <laughs> we got gloom bops in the building, right? He was like, man, I'm just trying. I got to do whatever I want. We got to listen to the last few seconds of that again. My man said, good or bad, he just has to have immunity regardless. He or she. He, he made sure to put the she in there, you know, just to, to make sure that, you know, just in case there's some progressives who might, you know, upset with Joe Biden or whatever. Wanted to think about this is not where they wanted us to be. The founders wanted the president to have immunity so the president can feel free to make decisions. Hopefully they'll be great decisions. But whether they are or not, a president of the United States has to have immunity. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, man, what, what, what in the world? But you know, I, this isn't new. It's just uh, things have exploded now. Oh God, we got okay. I think we got a few, uh, a few more minute long clips. <laughs> this is basically the only thing that's happening on True Social. It's just, it's just clips like that. Like Donald Trump is like fifty percent of the traffic on the whole platform. At what point are the actions of a sitting president 
using lawfare and weaponization against his opponent for purposes of election interference considered illegal. I believe, as do various highly respected legal scholars, that crooked Joe Biden has long since crossed over that very sacred threshold. He is a criminal. He is a horrible president. He's the worst president in the history of our country. And the only way that, that, that is it's that's such it's such a lazy critique of Joe Biden. He's the worst president we've ever had in history. One, because that's just not true. It's just not. And and also it's so like just shallow minded because you're not getting into any reason why. I mean, he'll say like, you know, the border and inflation and all of that. But that's like the worst president we've ever had ever. Like, I, th I think we can probably think of a few that were worse than him. You being one of them, you definitely being one of them, and George W. Bush also being one of them, Obama also being one of them. Biden, honestly, has done more than Obama did in a lot of ways, or at least the equivalent of it. It's like, you know, you can easily find people who were worse than him. You really can. Way he thinks Bill Clinton was worse. Oh, Bill, yeah, Bill Clinton was worse than Joe Biden. I mean, Bill Clinton had a, the three strikes laws, and the, you know, he really helped to dismantle the, or greatly weaken the welfare system. Bill Clinton's presidency was worse than Joe Biden's. Oh God, I mean, this it's. But these people are dumb. They're stupid. Thinks he can get elected is to take me to trials, take me to courts, city, state, and federal. They control them all. All of these cases that you're reading about are crooked Joe Biden's case because he can't put two sentences together. He can't do anything. So they weaponize government and they take me to court on bullshit. So we are going to win. We're going to win big. We're going to go through these horrible Biden trials. And at the end of the day, November 5th, everyone's coming out to vote for Trump. Thank you very much. It's just out that crooked Joe Biden, the worst and most corrupt president in the history of the United States. Again, the, the worst and most corrupt president in the history of the United States. Like, come on, man. By far, is leading the weaponization of government against his political opponent, me. Crooked Joe is a threat to democracy. We cannot let him continue. He could do that. Thanks for bringing that up. I almost forgot that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that, that may balance the scales a little bit you in office, all of this weaponization and lawfare that you're watching, all of these lawsuits against me, they're all started by the DOJ, the FBI, all of the people in government, even the state. Hey, you know what else is so dumb about this? It's like, on the one hand, he's arguing that the executive branch has way too much power right now. They can just take all these executive actions and kind of do whatever they want. But on the other hand, I, I should be able to get away with anything and so should anybody else. You know, it doesn't matter what. The, so then what's your argument? It's, oh, my God. It's just authoritarianism. It is nothing more than my way or the highway. That's all it is. Because. The, these arguments fall flat, and that's why he loses in court, because they're stupid. Cases and the city cases, they're being run by the DOJ. They put their people in there, and they're being run by the DOJ. We have to stop weaponization. There's never been anything like it in the history of our country. It's happened before, but only in third world countries. And we're becoming a third world country between our borders and all of the other things that are so bad, so, so bad. Between our borders and, and, and all of the other things that are so bad, so, so bad, all, all the other stuff, borders, I'll make, make sure you say the border, though. Don't forget to say border. But everything else can just is just things and stuff. We have to stop the weaponization and we have to stop it now. The best way to stop it is November 5th. We're going to beat them like a drum. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the things and stuff. It's time for Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States. He said that in all, every single clip, every single clip that we've seen, he has started it off. Joe Biden, the worst and most corrupt president in the history of the United States. <laughs> and I to debate. We have to talk about what he's doing and where we're going. We owe it to our country. We owe it to all Americans. Anytime, anywhere, any place.
Oh, he he said I'll debate you anywhere. You know, we'll see. We'll see, Trump. We'll see about that. You know, I, I won't be surprised if when the time comes to it, Donald Trump's like, you know what? I want to do it first, but now I don't. Definitely won't be surprised if that happens, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Okay, what will we got? Um nah, some of this stuff is just kind of we don't really need to go over because it it's not that big of a deal. Well, okay, what is this? Don't need to do that. Don't need to do that either because that basically was up and when Trump was ranting and raving and stuff. Okay, let's go to this this loser right here, Mark Robinson. MAGA candidate who preaches personal responsibility failed to file taxes for five years. This, this dude is just, he's... Ugh. And unfortunately, he's in a position of power. North Carolina, please, for the love of God and everything that is good in this world and the universe abroad, do not let this man win. Because all he is is obnoxious. And unfortunately, he'll carry out bad policy, but he's just a big loudmouth dipshit. That's all this man is. Trump endorsed North Carolina gubernatorial candidate Mark Robinson, who has a history of making inflammatory statements while also deriding people who purportedly lack a sense of personal responsibility, has a troubled history when it comes to filing his income taxes. And it is income tax season, by the way. One of the reasons I was a little bit later to today's stream is because I had to fill out some tax stuff. So, you know, apparently Mark Robinson, he don't like, you know, nobody really enjoys paying taxes, but you kind of got to do it. You kind of got to do it because without that, it's kind of difficult to have society. Okay. An investigation by ABC News has found that Robinson failed to file income taxes for five years, starting in the late 90s, and that after filing for bankruptcy in 2003, the Internal Revenue Service filed a motion for the bankruptcy court to compel Robinson to file taxes for the years 1998 to 2002. Although Robinson has in the past acknowledged some of his financial struggles during this time period. An examination of financial records by ABC found that they, quote, paint a more dire and detailed picture of his financial business history than has previously been disclosed. Oh, so he was hiding something. As they also show that he, quote, had previously filed for bankruptcy on two other occasions in 98 and 99. And as if that weren't enough, Robinson and his wife even lost their Chapter 13 bankruptcy protection in 2003 after they failed to comply with the agreed to repayment plan. In an interview with ABC News, a Robinson spokesman accused the outlet of partisan bias against him while also not denying. He didn't deny any of it, though. Y'all being biased, I ain't going to deny it, though. This is old news recycled by the Democrats and their allies in the press to distract the voters. The spokesman said, as a former factory worker who lost his job due to NAFTA and had his home foreclosed and was even forced to bankruptcy, the lieutenant governor has overcome many challenges, financial and others in his past. He's lived the struggles that families across North Carolina are facing. Well, you know what? Honestly, Mark Robinson's bigger problem. Mark Robinson's bigger problem than however many years he didn't pay taxes is that he's just a he's he's an asshole. I mean, that's that's really his biggest issue. He's a, he's just an asshole. He's a piece of shit. Um, you know, so when when stuff like this comes up, people are gonna scrutinize you more for it. If you if you were like a great guy, you know, if you were a nice guy, people, you know, maybe you were a little you were a little you were a little rough around the edges, but at the end of the day, people knew you were a good guy with a good heart. You know, they would be more willing to look past stuff like this because it would be like, I mean, you know, people go through things. It's OK. But when you're when you're just an asshole like he is. You know, people are going to scrutinize you more, but that that's all this guy is, man. He's just a big loudmouth dipshit who's not as big and bad as he thinks he is. But unfortunately, he's in a position of power so he can pretend like he is. OK. Now, we don't need to go over that. Let's see. Oh, Jessica Tarlov. Okay, let, let's see. You know, we, man, she got to hate her job. Maybe she doesn't, but I know there's, I mean, 
there's always going to be some aspects of whatever we do, even if it's so, even if it's things we're passionate about. There's always going to be aspects and elements of it that you don't, you know, some you just don't always feel like doing everything, you know, like you, you just don't. Man, this has to be miserable. Her going in there. But I'm sure they pay her quite well. I mean, I don't know how much she gets paid, but it's probably more than a few million dollars a year. So. Invest it right. To say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair election. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th He's not participant, afraid of anything. All big man, not, not afraid, whatever. I know him. Okay, not. I'm sure you... January 6th he's not participant, afraid of anything. All big man, not afraid, whatever. I know him. Okay, I'm sure you, you do know him. Who who wouldn't who would who would not feel fear when they're facing ninety one criminal and uh, criminal felonies? Who wouldn't feel fear? Like you you can say that you don't, but you do. I you do. It's it's <laughs> he doesn't feel fear. Trust me, I know him. I know the guy. He's not afraid of anything. Like yeah, okay. I don't care how big and bad you are. Don't nobody want to die in prison. I mean, I don't know him, but I unless don't you're like really crazy, and he ain't. He ain't that kind of crazy. Don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So <laughs> don't refute what happened. We know about Sidney Powell. We know about John Eastman, who just got disbarred. The Rudy Giuliani, who's obviously not in very good position, how the mighty have fallen. But the point of this. Good. Mark Robinson behind in the book. Because, I mean, let a let a not even just the damage he would cause. Oh, he would just be so annoying interview and doing it with Univision was about Latino support, right? And making sure that he shores that up. And he's down, he was up 29 points with Latinos the first year in office, and that edge is down to nine points. And that's due to the issues of inflation and crime. He's doing better. <laughs> she said, big man, big man strong. <laughs> he's not afraid, trust me. Shut up. Hey, you, she didn't even need to say that, but you know, it's Fox News, so you know. Yeah, big man strong no afraid no no me no feel fear me big man no 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 commercial break is when i'm done with this fox's jessica tarlov insists on making full rebuttal to conservative that's why i said man she has a tough job i mean she it, it's also not really a tough job at all but it, it's it kind of is so at least she gets paid well for it we've got to deport them mm -hmm. you know jessica in the green room you said <laughs> that if trump wins it could be the end of all time and space. Oh, I didn't know that, Aaron. I had no idea that he that he pardoned her her husband. Well, there you go. That uh, I'm sure that definitely does have something to do with it because that was embarrassing. And what's worse, it will hurt women and minorities more. I did say that. Yes, you did. It's extreme <laughs> pregnancy fog, I guess, as I near the end of the line. Um, that was a very rich discussion. I'm going to try to address as many of the points as I possibly can. Just one. <laughs> yeah, commercial break in about 30 seconds. No, 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 no. Commercial break is when I am done with this. So <laughs> the, the threat to democracy point is not working. And all of the good pollsters have made that point very clear to the Biden administration that actually the messaging that works is about the mundane stuff that people want to hear about lowering prescription drug prices and things like the debt and the deficit and preserving Medicare and Social Security. Those are all encompassed in the economy, right? Like how you're doing and how your family's going to survive looking ahead to the future. So that point is definitely out there. But to say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair election. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th he's not participants, afraid of anything. all big men. I guess that was the, the we, uh, smaller clip before. And not afraid, whatever. I know him. Okay, not. I'm sure you, you do know him and I don't know him, but I don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So... 
don't refute what happened. We know about Sidney Powell. We know about John Eastman, who just got disbarred. The Rudy Giuliani, who's obviously not in very good position, how the mighty have fallen. But the point of this interview and doing it with Univision was about Latino support, right? And making sure that he shores that. Okay, we already saw the, the rest, of, pretty much the rest of that. I was just organizing some stuff to open up. All right, let's see. Um, uh, Let's see, what should we do? Justin Trudeau. What was my man Justin Trudeau got to say right now? Justin Trudeau says there are no downsides to cannabis legalization, slams international treaties excuse to reject reform. Oh, I don't know. Fritzy, you probably know what he's saying. I don't know what the hell he's saying. La seule, la, le seul downside. Okay, I don't know what the what I don't. He something something something. You motherfuckers need to legalize cannabis. That's what he said. <laughs> but that, that that's that's what he was getting at. Um, but I mean, yeah, they they uh, they speak or in a bunch of places in Canada they speak French. Um, <laughs> that was funny though. All right, so let's see what's up with this shit right here. We got we got a couple more things. I've been exiting out some stuff just because we don't really need to go over everything. Um, also, too, we've been streaming for almost an hour and a half now, so you know. All right, what what is this? So this is some some clip. Some where is it? Oh, here it is. Tell me about um, if if Donald Trump does not win, what do you what do you do? I, I hope that I'm gonna die. Oh, this is a clip from TYT. What uh? This is on the Inquisitor, but yeah, this is from TYT. This sounds like uh, Ben Schuster. That's who this sounds like right here. Hold on, let me reload the page. All right. Tell me about um, if if Donald Trump does not win. What do you what do you do? I hope that I'm going to die. <laughs> you want to die if Donald Trump doesn't yes, win. I, do. I don't want to live like this anymore. You like our country the way it is now? I I mean, it doesn't really matter what I think, but you've got a pretty good life. You got you got nice clothes on, you got hat on, sunglasses, you got your health. I mean, the country's done pretty well by you, right? No, the country hasn't done anything by me. I, I've done everything for myself. My husband and I took care of ourselves as we grew older. Yes, David Schuster, not Ben Schuster, sorry. Now, when we when we got ready to retire, we took we had planned what we were going to do. Now, what is what is the country doing for me now? Do I get any interest on anything that I put away and saved? Well, your money is safe, right? I wouldn't say that. You got access to health care. I have access to health care because my husband served 20 years in the military. So the military did something for your family. The military is, military is trustworthy, right? I mean, the military health care system is great. No, I wouldn't say it's great. We were promised free health care for our whole life, but that did not happen. What is it that is so bad about where America is or where you are right now with America that you would want to die if Donald Trump doesn't win? I just don't want to live in a country that is as is, is screwed up as this one, that people are so out of control. And, and the She's not answering the question. She I, Honestly, she probably is thinking like, why the fuck did I even say that? She, that's just some shit that she said. She she don't she don't mean that. That's just something that came out her mouth. They think that everything that that they're entitled to everything. What, what what do you think about the stealing that's going on right now? What do you people mean stealing? Walk, people walk into stores and just can walk out with stuff. Well, crime is a problem, but there's also a lot of places where people but have crime to. Crime is increasing every day. Actually, the data shows it's not. Well, I don't care what the data shows. <laughs> I mean, she said, "Fuck, that. fuck what the data shows." I don't care. She she said, "Well, I don't care what the data shows." <laughs> have a totally different idea of of what's going on than what I have. So what do you trust? I trust Donald Trump. I trust Donald Trump. And what really upsets me the most is everybody remembers that one little blip that he that they that Billy Bush put out there when he first started to run. About grabbing the Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that that's the that's the one problem that people had with Trump's administration. It, it, before it even got started, that one little bit about grabbing bitches by the pussy without them saying you could do so. 
I thought she was at least going to say that. I thought she was about to say that one little blip of the country being shut down for an entire year while this man was president. But nah, she said, yo, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What can you do with these kinds of people, man? That's so I mean, that was that was pretty memorable. Well, why is that memorable? Why isn't it memorable the things that he did do? Well, he's been indicted in four different cases and 91 criminal yeah, charges. None of that stuff is true. You know it's not. I don't know whether it's true or not. I just know that. No, I just know that a pro. No, I'm just a journalist who sees that he's been in. I mean, so how do you explain? How do you explain all? Well, you're a journalist. I can't trust you. You're a journalist. You're, you're the last person I should be listening to. <laughs> These charges. How do you explain all? What's well, going they're on? all made up. They're all made up. Yep. They're all made up. So the election interference in Georgia, Sidney Powell and, and Kenneth Cheesebro, who worked for Donald Trump as lawyers, I they believe, just pled guilty and admitted. I don't believe that either. You don't believe they pled guilty? Nope. nope. So when they no, said that they I were. I never turn on the news. I never turn on the TV. I never listen. I, I don't believe that. Listen to that. <laughs> well, they don't consider Fox. They don't consider Fox and these other right wing outlets news. They they don't they consider it truth. And news is like a bad word. Where do you get your information if you don't watch I the news? I get my information from Telegram. 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 Are there any liberal or progressive voices on Telegram? I don't have any idea. There are not. Is it important to hear from people who have a different point of view than you? Uh, you know, I'd like to sit down with a liberal someday and have them tell me what it is that they think is so great about what's going on. She's lost. This woman is totally lost. I mean, that, that, that's I mean, there's really nothing else to even say about that. That one, she's she at no point was she coherent. Nothing made sense. Nothing was rational. It, it was that was just a bunch of BS. All right. I had an article up, but uh, this is from Bloomberg, which I don't have a membership to. But it says how by Menendez bribery trial to start May 6th without his wife. Yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob Menendez, one of the senators here in New Jersey, is definitely not in a good position, but that is uh, by his own hand. You know, so you can't really, you can't really feel too bad for the guy. All right. Now let's see what's up with this. Huh? Oh, my bad. I was reading something. Now, Biden administration announces plans to expand background checks to close gun show loopholes. I mean, what, but let's see if it, I mean, can it? Can anything come from it? Can it be done? Let's see. The Biden administration announced Thursday final plans to expand requirements to perform background checks for those who buy firearms at gun shows or online, aiming to effectively close that gun control advocates close what gun control advocates have long referred to as the gun show loophole. The new federal rules will not uh, will not create new law, but will expand the definition of licensed firearms dealers. This move will also sharpen existing enforcement measures to ensure that the background screenings, which have not traditionally been necessary at certain gun sale locations, are carried out in more circumstances. The Justice Department estimates there are around 23,000 unlicensed firearms dealers who will now be required to complete background checks when selling guns, although senior administration officials said that predictions about the unlicensed gun market are, are imprecise. The expanded background requirements emerged from Congress's passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act in 2022 and will go into effect 30 days after the rule is published in the Federal Registry this week. Well, this sounds like something that can be reversed uh, if Donald Trump wins, which he might. But we'll see. I mean, because at the end of the day, I mean, Congress, well, Republicans, really, they're the ones who ultimately are in the way of any kind of gun reform. If there was if there was like a super majority, I think we would get some 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 type of gun reform passed. It might not be all that we need, obviously, but for the most part, it's pretty much Republicans that are getting in the way of everything. Oh, hold on, what is this? 
All right, we got a couple more. Most Americans are $1.37 million behind on retirement saving goals. That's, that's, that's a decent amount to be behind, but let's see. Many Americans have lofty retirement saving goals. The average American now believes they will need $1.46 million to retire comfortably, but their actual savings are falling fall short, far short. A new Northwestern Mutual study found. According to the study, the average American has $88,400 currently saved for retirement. This means they are a whopping $1.37 million short of their goal. And I guess that's the average American who has like some type of a, a retirement savings at, at some age. That wouldn't be like, you know, like your average 30 or 40 year old. This would probably be like someone who's in that age range. The gap between retirement expectations and reality is widening. A. Hey. Uh. Um, my bad. The amount Americans believe they will need to save to retire comfortably is increasing. While their level of savings is declining, the survey found in 2023, the average American believed they would need $1.27 million to retire comfortably and had $89,300 saved, making the gap between expectation and reality $1.18 million. This year, as the, Americ as, the Americ as the amount Americans think they will need to retire comfortably has increased and the amount they have saved has decreased, that gap has grown to $1.37 million for the average person. Quote, Americans, including my clients, have goals for retirement that are higher than in years past. Said Chad Armstrong, a private wealth advisor at Northwestern Mutual. Quote, many factors play into it, including longer lifespans and uncertainty around the future of Social Security and pensions. Can Americans catch up? Quote, it's more important than ever for Americans to plan comprehensively and begin saving and to do both with intention. The challenge I've run into is clients feeling that they can pull from their 401k like an ATM. OK, this is more like financial advice down here. But the important thing from the article is that. The gap between expectation and reality has grown in one year's time. <laughs> Vincent, you got the funny for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh. Um, okay, we gonna we gonna end with this one. We there's a couple more pulled up from Chip Chick, but I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save these Chip Chick ones for tomorrow because I already know tomorrow there's gonna be way less news to talk about. So I'm gonna save the Chip Chick for tomorrow and we gonna uh end today's stream with a study on cannabis's impact on people's brains non-medical cannabis use linked to dramatically lower cognitive decline risk in adults over 45 this is from syracuse new york in a surprising new study, researchers have found that non-medical cannabis use is associated with a significantly lower risk of subjective cognitive decline, SCD for short. In adults 45 and older, SCD refers to an individual self-reported experience of worsening or more frequent confusion or memory loss. It's often an early warning sign of impending cognitive impairment in dementia. The study conducted by researchers at Sunny Upstate Medical University is published in current Alzheimer research. Zi Chen, an assistant professor in the school's Department of Public Health and Preventative Medicine, and Professor Rob, uh, Roger Wong, utilized data from the 2021 Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, a national US health survey. They examined the relationship between various aspects of cannabis use, including reasons for use, frequency, and methods of consumption, and the prevalence of subjective cognitive decline in over 4,700 middle-aged and older adults. Okay, so here's some of the data. Interestingly, they found that compared to non-users, those who consume marijuana for non-medical reasons had a whopping 96% lower odds of reporting SCD. So while at the same time we make you forget shit, it can help you not forget shit at the same time. So you just got to find a balance.
even after adjusting for numerous demographic health and lifestyle factors. In other words, recreational cannabis users were much less likely to notice declines in their memory and thinking compared to their counterparts who abstained. I don't know exactly the science behind that. Maybe stress reduction has something to do with it because that's one of the, I mean, shit above all, above anything else, that's one of the biggest reasons I smoke weed is because the shit helps reduce stress. Sometimes it doesn't, but it, it's better than nothing sometimes. But I don't know. While medical marijuana use and using cannabis for both medical and non-medical reasons were also associated with reduced SCD risks. These relationships weren't statistically significant. Additionally, how often someone used cannabis in the method of consumption, you know, whether they like smoke it out of a bong or uh, if they vape it, if they, you know, roll it up in some shit. It says that didn't appear to impact subjective cognitive decline either. So what might explain this novel and unexpected finding? The researchers propose a few potential mechanisms. What is THC? What's the tech? What's the real word for it? Tetrahy tetrahydrocannabinol. Tetrahydrocanna. Okay, tetrahydrocannabinol. There we go. Tetrahydrocannabinol. The main psychoactive compound in marijuana that produces the high could play a role. Some animal studies have hinted that very low doses of THC might improve cognitive function in older mice. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can use that exact data for humans. It just means that that's a starting point. And you can move forward. You can move forward. You didn't need, oh, I'm sorry, Dragon, I'm sorry, Dragon Ball Super. I apologize. I didn't mean to do this. Why didn't you need this right now? Isn't this, this is helping, th this is giving you motivation to keep smoking weed, man. Keep chiefing, keep on smoking shit. As soon as this stream's over, I'm going straight to my bong, Susana Santos, and I'm taking a hit. Because I've been running my mouth for almost two hours. And I've been having a good time, but that's a long time to be talking, especially for somebody like me. But I'm having a good time. But yeah, we saving the chip chick stories for tomorrow because we didn't went through a bunch of shit today. And already Friday, I mean, normally the news cycle on Fridays is is, is not as steep anyway, unless something major happens. It's Friday. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a fun stream tomorrow. Where's the mouse? Oh, they caution. They said, Oh, the results are it's still early, so don't just go, you know, don't just go smoking a ton of weed. But hey, that's not what we're here to encourage. But if you if you need to, then do your thing. Just make sure that you do it safely. But look, listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to all the new subscribers. We got some new subscribers yesterday after we got off of the Indisputable with Dr. Richie. And um, yeah, man, everything's going well. Is it as the weeks pile on? I'm gonna be out and about quite a bit. I got a lot, a lot planned, a lot going on. And too, like I mentioned, next week we starting some new programming. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So y'all have a fantastic Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Friday, Junior. So shit, go have a drink. Go do something. You know what I'm saying? Go shake your ass. I don't, go find something to do. Have a good time. And uh, I'm about to get high and I got more work to do. That's what I got to do tonight. But I'm enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. I love all of y'all. And I will see you tomorrow. We're going to have a good, a good